Today we're going to talk about the seal, floor, and round nodes in both Unreal 5 and Unity. Let's get started. I'm going to start out the video by just simply explaining what these nodes do. And then the second thing that I'm going to do is demonstrate their simple functionality. And then finally, we're going to end up the video by showing you three different uh, examples of how you can use these nodes. Now, luckily for us, these nodes are pretty simple and their functionality is fairly basic. Their purpose is to convert uh, decibel numbers to whole numbers. So for example, a value like 0.3 is a decimal number and a whole number is like one, two, or three. So what these nodes do is convert decimal numbers, numbers to whole numbers. Starting off with round, uh, a decimal number uh, of 0.5 or greater, this node will round it up to one. And a decimal number less than 0.5, it'll round it down to zero. So somewhere in the middle, it's either gonna round it up or round it down, depending on if your incoming value is uh, greater than or less than 0.5. Greater than, it'll round it up, and less than, it'll round it down. For floor, it's always going to round your decimal value down. So regardless of where it is in the range of uh, 0.0001 all the way up to 0.9999, that's all going to be rounded down to zero. As soon as you get to one uh, and past one, it's going to round down to one. So values above one will be rounded down to one. Values above two will be rounded down to two. Um, but you can see how it's always rounding down to the nearest whole number. And opposite of floor, we have ceiling, which is always going to round up. So any value between 0.001 and 0.999 is gonna round up to one. And as soon as you get over one, those values are gonna round up to two. And over two, those values are gonna round up to three. So ceiling is rounding up, floor is rounding down, and round is rounding up or down, depending on if you're greater than or less than 0.5. So we have three nodes that are converting our decimal values to whole numbers. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at an actual uh, demonstration of these ideas. Okay, here I have a couple of constant values, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. If I wire the 0 0.7 into my seal node, which is a, an abbreviation for sealing, then I'm gonna wire that into my base color and uh, because it's the ceiling, remember ceiling is always rounding up. So my 0 0.7 gets rounded up to one. And you can see that over here in my preview, I've rounded 0 0.7 up to a value of one. Similarly, if I do the same thing with 0 0.3, you can see that it's rounded 0 0.3 up to a value of one. What about floor? So if I plug 0 0.7 into floor, now you can see that it's rounded it down to zero. My object is black. So 0 0.7 is being rounded down to zero. Similarly with 0 0.3, it's being rounded down to zero. And let's take a look at round. So if we round our values, round 0 0.3, you can see that it's being rounded down to zero. And if I round 0 0.7, 0.7 is being rounded up to one because it's greater than 0.5 and 0.3 is less than 0.5. Okay, so that's the basics of how it works. Let's take a look at three examples of ways you might use uh, the seal, floor, and round nodes. In this first example, I have a really basic mask texture here. You can see that um, I'm just looking at the green channel right now and it has this really cloudy pattern on it. And I wanna use this mask texture, um, but instead of having this like really cloudy, soft gradient in the texture, I actually want it to have hard edges. And 
I'm using this mask texture in several other places in my project, so I know that I can save some texture space if I continue to use this same texture, but I actually want it to have slightly uh, different characteristics. I want it to have hard edges instead of this really uh, soft uh, gradient fall off. And for that, I can use the round node. If I connect my green channel to round, and then pass that into uh, my base color and emissive. Now you can see that whatever values in my mask texture are less than 0.5 have been rounded down to black. And whatever values were greater than 0.5 have been rounded up to white. And so I've been able to create this effect of a different looking uh, mask texture that has hard edges uh, versus the soft gradient that I had before just by using the round node uh, to clamp things at a value of one or a value of zero. This is a good way to save texture space if you have some uses of the same texture that need soft gradients and other uses uh, that, have, that need hard edges. Here's another example using an array texture. You can see I have this node called Sample Texture 2D Array. And we went over this example a couple of weeks ago, but let me show you what's going on here. Uh, with an array texture, I actually have multiple textures in one. Uh, let me show you what this texture looks like in Photoshop. So here's my texture in Photoshop, and you can see that I have several different types of cloth normal maps. Uh, I've got denim, felt, leather, and some kind of linen. And these four different normal maps here get stacked into an array. And my array texture sampler node in Unity has this pin here called an index. And this has to be a whole number, 0, 1, 2, or 3, that determines which of those four different textures it's going to sample. So I'm able to sample multiple textures all at the same time using my sample texture 2D array. And it, I can tell it which texture to sample using this index value. But like I said, the index value has to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. So here I have a mask texture where I'm trying to, trying to paint a mask to determine where the different uh, textures are going to go. But as we know, uh, the range of values that I can store in a texture are only between 0 and 1. So I have these dark values and my brightest values. The maximum that I can go is only up to one. So if I were to paint this texture uh, with some blacks and some whites, I could have a value of zero and a value of one, and that would allow me to pick two of my four textures in my array. But I actually have four, and so I need values that go above one in order to pick zero, one, two, or three. And so what I do in this case is I multiply my texture value by 3, which gives me a range of, instead of a range of 0 to 1, now I have a range of 0 to 3. And then I round my values using the round node. And this round is going to move my values to the closest whole number. So where I had a range of 0 to 3, now I'm going to have values that are exactly at 0, 1, 2, or 3. And you can see that here in the little texture preview where I've got felt over here and denim over here. And you can also see it in my main preview window as well, where my mask texture that is originally uh, just a value of 0 to 1 now becomes the 0, 1, 2, or 3 index value that my sample texture 2D array needs. And I was able to get those values uh, uh, moved to their nearest whole number using the round node. And you can see here that I've got the various different types of normal maps uh, applied to my mesh using this round node. Okay, let's take a look at one last example. In this example, we're going to be using the floor node to make a tune shader. 
The first thing that we need to do is start out with some lighting. And you might say, well, we already have lighting. <laughs> Take a look at the preview here. You know, I've got my gray here and the, and the dark side of my object here with my light. Well, we need lighting that is split up into the various shades of uh, tune paint. And so for that, I'm gonna need to, uh, I'm gonna need to artificially create my light. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take the normal vector of my model and do a dot product with my light vector. Uh, and most renderers that render into a G buffer don't really give you uh, the main light vector. And so I'm just faking it here. I'm just gonna pretend that my light vector is negative 0 0.7, 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7. And if we wire this into both our base color and our emissive, you can see that that's going to give us uh, this uh, this light vector that's coming from above and to the left. Uh, these values might be a little bit different in Unreal, but in Unity, a value of negative 0 0.7, 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7 is going to give you a light source that's coming from up and to the left. Okay. The next thing that I need to do is adjust these values a little bit because my dot product node is giving me a value of one in this portion of my model and a value of negative one around the other side of my model. And I actually want values that go from zero to one, not uh, negative one to one. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my negative one to one range and multiply by 0.5 and then add 0 0.5, and that is going to compress my range into uh, the 0 to 1 space, whereas it was uh, negative 1 to 1 before. Okay, so now I can see, now you can see I have a little bit more, uh, a little bit softer lighting, and a lot of game engines actually use this type of lighting. Uh, it's called Half Lambert. Uh, and it's pretty good for really cheap skin and that sort of thing because uh, it's really soft because it's going from uh, 0 to 1 instead of uh, negative 1 to 1. All right, so I've adjusted my range. The next thing that I need to do is um, split up the various areas of my lighting into individual bands. I want, instead of a nice smooth gradient for lighting, uh, I want hard edges. So right now my range is going from uh, zero to one, and I'm gonna change that range so that it goes from zero to five by multiplying by five here. And then I'm gonna use the floor node, and this is going to round down. Whatever values are between zero and one are gonna be rounded down to zero. Whatever values are between one and two are gonna be rounded down to one, etc. And so it's gonna create some hard edges in my lighting. So I'll have values at zero, values at one, two, three, four, and five. Well, if I just plug this in as it is, you're gonna see that my values are banded, but they're way blown out. They're too high to be represented here. And so after doing this floor adjustment and having a maximum value of five, I need to break things down a little bit. And so I'm going to multiply now by 0 0.16. Uh, so now you can see in this little preview here, I'm getting the nice tune shader banding. So if I plug this into my master stack, now you can see I have these uh, really interesting ink and paint lines where if somebody were painting the cells of of animation they would have these hard edges and so this is a method that you can use for doing cartoon shading using floor uh, to round down the lighting values uh, to the lowest or to the nearest whole number and then adjusting the whole range to be back between zero and one so by rounding down, I'm able to get these hard edges in the lighting and create something that's kind of like tune shading. Okay, pretty cool. So we took a look at one example where we uh, rounded our mask to get hard edges. Uh, we took a look at another example where we were able to round our values to get the correct index 
for our array texture. And then our third example, we were able to do a uh, tune shader. Pretty cool. I hope these have been helpful and that you've enjoyed learning about the ceiling, floor, and round nodes. Thanks a lot for watching, and I really appreciate all your support. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.